Juan Archilada, very good to see you, sir. Bellator Bantamweight champion, thanks for your time. Uh, it's been interesting these uh, past couple of weeks since New Year's Eve. There's a guy you have your eye on. I saw you posted about it. Kyoji Horiguchi, what a finish against yeah. Kaya Sakura. Yeah. I loved it. It was amazing. And uh, I feel like there was a lot of buzz about maybe you and Kai before that. And now it's, it's looking like Kyoji. But with everything going on in the world right now, it's supposed to be Tokyo Dome, right? Uh, how likely is that to go ahead? Have you heard anything? Uh, how do you feel about that? that date right now i mean everything i heard came from their side and it all sounded good to me uh you know uh, of course i wanted to fight whoever had the title and um so at the time asakura had it and so he was the man to beat but uh H horiguchi going in there and you know dismantling him in the <laughs> the first round which was crazy uh is awesome to see you know he's back he's a, he, he looks stronger than ever and you know better than ever so i'm gonna get the best uh horiguchi there is and i'm excited for that how much respect is there for horiguchi over the years because he's got to be up there right with one of the best bantamweights ever given what he's achieved you know bellator rise in the ufc as well and he had seven wins in the ufc where does yeah. he rank for you i mean for the lightweights it's like fighting uh you know john jones uh kane velasquez you know uh those type of names for the light the lighter weights and so that's what i'm looking forward to and um in terms of this matchup what about the styles uh you know we know how good his striking is how durable he can be there's a little question mark over the knee injury he, he seemed fine with it with those low kicks uh what about your style versus his how do you see it um, I, you know, I think my style, I'm, I'm able to adapt while I'm in the cage. Um, we've seen it with multiple fights with like someone like Pitbull or Patchy Mix. Um, I'm an adaptable fighter at any moment in the fight. And uh, I think with him, he has one certain game plan or one certain style that he could flash and throw out. But it's just a matter of picking them apart, lasting, um, you know, the duration. And, and, and when I see my opening, you know, enforcing it. Is it a dream of yours to fight in Japan? I feel like it's uh, it's definitely on the bucket list for a lot of fighters. I mean, performing in front of Japan's audience and even in the arenas, the historical arenas they have there. I mean, it's like performing in front of Broadway if you're a performer, you know, you're just like get the opportunity to go there where it's bright lights and, um, you know, where MMA originated from and, you know, uh, how much influence the Japanese had on martial arts um, from the beginning of time it gets you excited and it gets you something pumped up to show that, you know, my culture, my style ha has known MMA, uh, martial arts, their, their entire lives. It's pretty cool. This relationship between Ryzen and Bellator having kind of the exchange shows last year, um, as it stands, would it be both belts on the line, his belt, your belt? How's it, how's this going to work? Um, that's the best thing about, uh, promoters managers and then fighters uh we don't have to negotiate too much of that you know i think the um the right people scott coker and you know the main promoter um i don't know why i just draw drew a blank uh <laughs> i'm sorry the promoter from ryzen uh he he um they're they're ironing out the details right now and and once they draw up the contract and both sides agree then i'll i'll know what it says and you know, I'll see if my my belt will be on the line as well, or if they're going to do what they do with Darian Caldwell and him. What, Either way, what... <laughs> the, it, whatever belt could go on the line, it doesn't matter because I'm more than ready for this fight. I've been calling for this fight, I think, about two years ago, a year ago, and I'm ready for this fight. What's your sense? Do you, do you have a, an inkling as to what it's going to be? Is it going to be for his belt, your belt, or, or both belts? We don't often see both belts on the line. I mean, it, it would make sense, right? Uh, but like I said, I if we fight in Japan, I'm sure it would be the Ryzen uh, title. If we fight here in America, I'm sure it would be uh, the Bellator titles. So because uh, I think there are two different styles. You know, one's in a ring, one's in a cage. One's a five-minute round. The other one's a three-minute round. So... I think if we fight for a certain um, organization, it'll probably, in my opinion, be for that belt. It's interesting because I feel like Kai is somewhat the soccer kick specialist. You know, his two finishes before Kyoji were awesome soccer kicks. How do you feel about soccer kicks? Are you a soccer fan? 
Uh, oh. Is that a way? Is that something that intrigues you if you fight in Japan? Yeah, being Spanish, you know, I'm I'm a you know huge soccer fan. Uh, so and you know. Uh, I've had a couple fights where I've thrown soccer kicks, not towards the head, but because it's um, MMA, I have to aim for the body. Sometimes they stand up and they get hit in the head. But, uh, you know, I like it. I, I think it brings a different dynamic and different nerve and tension um, in the fight. It's just uh, one thing I'm not looking forward to is, is uh, being my, having my elbows taken away from me, um, you know, with ground and pound and striking because it's another tool that's utilized to um, help benefit you in certain areas. How are things over at Bellator for you? Do you feel like you've gotten more of the respect you deserve since becoming champ? Uh, we, we've all had a kind of a tough time with, with COVID in terms of things being paused a lot, right? And having to sit on the sidelines. But generally, if you look back at the last year or two or, or post winning the belt, how's life been for you? Yeah, it's good. I mean, uh, they gave me, I've been in Bellator for, uh, you know, six, seven fights and, uh, I've had two title fights, so they're treating me awesome, you know? I mean, not many people could, let alone say they fought for one title, I've got to fight for two. And being a world champ just um, helped, helped me uh, pay back to the owners of, you know, my gratitude of saying thank you and, you know, being a champion uh, outside of the arena and inside of the arena. So that means carrying yourself with character and, you know, try to do the right things when no one's looking, you know, because that's the, you know, message I pass on to my kids. And so I have to practice what I preach. So, you know, I've, I've been thankful. Life's been good for me as a champ and looking forward to the future for sure. If you look across some of the best promotions in the world, you know, you've got people like Peter Yan and, you know, you've got yourself, you've got Kyoji Horiguchi in one championship, you've got Bibiano Fernandez. Does it feel like bantamweight's the most exciting division across the board, across promotions right now, or at least one of them? I definitely think this fight goes through. It's going to bring a, huge, a lot more buzz um, uh, back into the 135 division with my teammate TJ Dillashaw coming back and, you know, possibly the same time I'm going to be fighting uh, brings a lot more noise to the bantamweight division. So here in the next three months, it's going to be uh, the talk of, of, you know, the whole MMA is the 135 division. There's a lot of rumors that TJ is going to fight Jose Aldo, which would be very, very cool. Uh, do you have any, any thoughts on that? Is that a fight you'd like to see? Is that real? Is that going to happen? Because I think it'd be very cool. Hell yeah, that's a fight I would want to see. You know, that's um, a living le two living legends uh, going at it and still being in their prime and letting loose, you know. So it definitely... A, a contender fight if it if it goes through um you know and i definitely see another hen and burrell and tj dillashaw you know kind of masterpiece so i think that's going to be a similar outcome do you think that's what he wants is that what he's talking about in the gym right now aldo or is he looking at something else uh tj for sure i mean he he he'll fight anyone you know obviously he wants his title uh so if he could fight yawn first that'll be ideal right and then um let the rest you know fight um to get there but obviously we live in a, a world of mma where when you mess up um whether hurt injured um you know get uh, suspended uh you give up your right as a champion and so um people would like to see that first fight happen and i think it's a number one contender for sure how do you feel about bellator in terms of their strategy nowadays i think there's been a shift, right? I, there was a reason maybe that they weren't in for Anderson Silva, that they're not really going for the older fighters anymore, that they're kind of trying to scour the globe for the younger up and coming talent. Do you sense that there's some, I mean, if you look at the records, a lot of the guys, you know, it's like 12 and one, 16 and one, 15 and two. There seems to have been a shift. Have you noticed that? Do you feel like there are a lot of new killers around? Well, yeah, that's uh, that's the best thing about having a promoter like Scott Coker. He knows how to generate buzz first on a promotion where everyone was talking about, oh, my gosh, Bellator treats their fighters so much better, um, starting to pull bigger names. And then people, of course, haters will be like, oh, they're washed up. But in the meantime, it's generating buzz for Bellator, which then in return could get the young up and comers wanting to sign, wanting to be part of the organization. So I think it's been a hell of a job and a, and a great part on Coker's job on generating the buzz and bringing that um, young up and coming talent, the best prospects in the world into Bellator. And I'm definitely excited for it. Given the, this relationship between Ryzen and Bellator, uh, I think it'd be great to see 
these co-promotions happening a little more regularly. It's kind of like a special once a year thing. I think twice a year would be awesome. But given that you were linked quite heavily to Kai and he really wants to prove himself on the world stage, is, is that a fight you'd like down the line, uh, depending on what happens with Kyoji? Because Kai's an exciting fighter. I think he's 26 as well, so he's getting better. Yeah, the cross-promotion stuff is awesome, right? Because uh, you literally have your boss having so much confidence and belief in you to go to another organization and saying, hey, this is my number one fighter. Who's your number one fighter? And they put two champions in the ring. It, it gets me the jitters thinking about it because it's something I definitely want to happen. And, uh, you know, that being said, the cross promotions are awesome. And I win this title. I'll, I'll fight whoever Japan has next in line for me to defend the Risen title against. Do you like that Kai fight? Do you think that's a fun one, given that he's, he's quite entertaining and so are you? Yeah, I think I dominate him a lot uh, worse than Horiguchi did. Um, you know, I think my um, Western style of MMA is a little more um, advanced than his. And But yeah, I definitely would love to fight him and, sh and showcase that. Of course, uh, sometimes like the questions of, of dream fights are a little bit redundant because, you know, you are not limited to who's in your promotion, but, but a little bit. But do you have like a list of fighters who you just feel legends or the very best in the world who given that you're the champion in Bellator that you would love to test yourself against at 135 is there anyone else kind of on your hit list yeah I mean I would love to get into um uh one FC and fight their champions there I like to go you know just on a championship rampage you know but uh you know there's a lot of good guys that Bellator also signed um you know Sergio Pettis still very interested in, in that fight I mean I might even fight him before I fight Horiguchi so it just depends on when the time this whole time frame takes place but uh look at man like I've always wanted to prove myself and I have and every weight class I fought in you know 135 145 155 and 160 and uh I continue to look for the best matchups as uh you know the older I get in my career and uh because I want to challenge myself against the guys like Benson Henderson and all these other guys that have built names up for themselves uh because it makes it interesting it, it, it makes you a household name it makes you popular in MMA and uh I go about it doing di differently than other people. Um, but then again, my accolades show that I've been able to be the dark horse and, you know, kind of creep under the radar and, and, and still win title for title every, every organization I fight for. Do you feel sharpest at 135? Where, where do you think you're strongest? Honestly, I have such a great trainer at every weight class. I'm just as big. Uh, I had to cut just as much weight as um, uh, I, I do at 135 all the way up to 155. So, you know, I, I feel the best at every weight class. Honestly, never feel undersized, never feel, you know, um, slow. And, uh, you know, it, it's kudos to my training coach, Sam Calavita at the training lab. I mean, your record's awesome. 25 and two, uh, you're on a two fight win streak. The, uh, the pit bull fight, is that one that you want to get back? Is that one that you're pushing for? I mean, you've talked about Sergio Pettis, Kyoji, but is that on your radar for later in 2021, maybe? Yeah, he finishes uh, the tournament out, you know, I definitely would love that rematch. But if he doesn't, I want to fight someone that, you know, can catapult me back into a, a title talk on being a multi-division champion in uh, Bellator or Ryzen. A win over Kyoji, a dominant win. What does that do for your legacy and your status in terms of uh, being the, the best and, and also, you know, putting you in, in, in place in history? Yeah, it starts my superstardom, you know. It's um, fighting a guy that was the first... Um, I'm, first of all, I'm fighting a guy who was the very first person to simultaneously old, hold two um, big promotion belts in Bellator and Ryzen. And uh, for me to have to battle that is going to be um, a treat in itself, you know, and then going and defeating them and then being becoming the two... The, uh, um, two belt holder for two different promotions and uh, big big names. It's gonna bring the start of super superstardom for me. And uh, I guess finally, hoping that this goes ahead, Tokyo Dome, that would be ridiculous. I think it's 17 years since Pride was in Tokyo Dome, so MMA back in Japan's biggest baseball stadium. And what does that do, not only for you but just for the sport at the moment? That, that feels historic. Yeah, it's like salivated all over my so I'm drooling over the idea, right? Because um, we could go into a different country and sell that place out and put on a show that me and Horiguchi will. I mean, 
it speaks volume. You got a guy that's, what is he, 29 and three now or 28 and three, me 25 and two, the records are there. The competitions are there, both training camps. They, uh, we both come out of great training camps. I mean, just everything about the bright light, having it in a big arena like that and setting records and fighting next to some of the best, which would probably be, you know, Takura and, and uh, Tension. And like, you, you just have all these big name fights that could possibly um, be fighting on your card or you, you'd be fighting on their card. And it's humbling and it's an idea that excites me and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing if it goes through. Man, fingers crossed. Let's hope it goes ahead. It's going to be epic if it does. Yeah. Uh, thank you positively for that one. Juan, uh, you're the man. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank Good you. Luck. Yeah, thank you to all the fans that tuned in, and uh, I appreciate you guys. Pick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling.